So a little bit about me, for any of you who may be here for the first time, and if you are here for the first time, you can raise your hand um, or send me a little note in the chat box if this is your first class here in Sahaja Online that helps me get to know a little bit about your background. I know that some of us have been meditating for quite a while. This entire series is designed to be for all levels, so we'll be interspersing beginner level, intermediate, and so forth. And we do have an intermediate class that continues on after, not on the same day, but that I do do at another time during the week. So once you're at that level that you've got that foundation established, I would love to invite you to join us for our intermediate class, which is of course also free. So I've been practicing Sahaja for more than 26 years, teaching for more than 20. I'm a transplant upstate New York, but I have been here for longer than I was downstate where I was raised. So I am absolutely, um, you know, at home in the countryside, loving to nourish myself, my spirit, and be totally surrounded by nature, which is an incredibly conducive scenario for being able to develop this realm of our being. The, the classes that I've been teaching for the past 20 years, mostly in upstate New York, are in and around um, the Mohawk Valley area, although I do extend all the way from Albany to Rome. Um, teaching classes community level for organizations, for schools, really responding to the demand, which has very wonderfully, I mean, in my opinion, increased over the years. When I started teaching quite a while ago, there was really no interest in meditation. So it's, it's delightful to see how the interest has grown, how we are all recognizing or we are growing in our recognition that mental health is something that needs to be addressed and that meditation is a wonderful way to do that. This is just a sampling of some of the classes that I've taught, so you may be familiar with those as well. I typically teach seasonally. I'll do an eight to 13 week series every season in order to have a beginning and an end. And so this is one of those series this summer of 2020, our first week, which is today, is our intro, getting us ourselves established and establishing our meditation routine so that we're all comfortable knowing what we know, doing what we do to really get the fundamentals of the Sahaja technique of meditation in place in our lives. We'll then be moving onwards from weeks two through seven, establishing that practice. Every week we'll have a sizable amount of time spent in guided meditation, 20, or 25 minutes if we have time for it. And it will also involve learning more about the meditation practice and the process. So the process of meditation, what is actually happening when we are in meditation and the practice of this technique of meditation. We'll be learning tips to enhance our practice. And then as we wrap things up week eight, week, week eight tips for going further, always self-assessing, always looking at ourselves. Hopefully, as we get more involved in this practice, we are learning more about ourselves on a daily basis through our daily meditations. So two things, we just wanna have these fundamentals in place, understanding that the Sahaja technique is about two things. It's about learning how to meditate, which is the practice, the actual conducive environment that we are placing ourselves into be in the state of meditation. And while in that process, in that practice, learning about the process that takes place, the actual happening that we are enabling to take place when we enroll in the state of meditation. So a bit about the meditation itself, the practice, what do we need to do to make this work, to reap the benefits of this technique? This meditation is not like other meditation practices. It is not about visualization. It is not about um, any kind of manipulating our already incredibly busy mental activity, but it's about learning how to direct our power of attention, our focus, our ability to actually harness the power of our attention not to be in the state of mental activity. So no observation, no mindfulness. We're actually going beyond that. It's mindlessness or mind emptiness in learning how we can, with that harnessing of the power of our attention, suspend our thoughts, actually immerse our complete attention into 
the silence of this present moment. And that's our conducive space. That is the state of meditation in Sahaja. So focusing our attention and suspending our thoughts, that state is known as thoughtless awareness. So we're thoughtless, we're not becoming loosely engaged in this world, we're actually more engaged in this world, we're becoming completely aware of the reality of this present moment, but we're not doing it in a state of analysis or in a state of reaction. We're doing it in a state of emptying our mind and immersing ourselves into that state where there is no thought right here in this present moment. Getting that practice established by meditating twice a day enables us to really plug in. It's truly just like plugging in to that source that already exists within us that enables the happening to take place, this living process to take place. And it's simply about learning how to be in that state of meditation or thoughtless awareness. In thoughtless awareness, how do we do this? How do we get beyond our mind? How do we stop that train of thought that is just relentless? We actually direct our attention above our mind. So in the space above the crown of the head, this is the present moment. We're not in the past, we're not in the future, we're in the center or in the present moment, right here, right now. This area has been described as the torsion area where all knowledge resides. We could put our attention in the past or the future. That's typically where we reside. All of our thoughts correspond either to the future or the past, worried, nervous, trying to predict or plan for the future, or ruminating, regressing, um, regretting all of the past, what may have happened. When our attention, when our focus is right here in the present moment, there is nothing to think about. The future does not exist yet. The past, it's happened, it's over with and we're learning how to be present right here, right now. So focusing our attention, suspending our thoughts. That's all we have to do to be in that state of meditation. Once we get there, once we're enabling ourselves to be in that state of meditation, this process takes place. This process involves the balancing, strengthening, and reestablishing of our already present subtle energy system, a system that has been neglected, that we have not been familiar with, it's lost knowledge in a way, but we are getting back in touch with this ancient knowledge of this system which resides within us and enabling a process to take place which balances, strengthens, and reestablishes the innate qualities of this system. What is the system composed of? Three things, our inner energy or the kundalini, which is a feminine coiled energy which resides in the triangular bone at the base of the spine or the sacrum bone, as it's known in medical science. That inner energy lies dormant until it's beckoned to rise, to be awakened, and to work through this system, creating that balance. So it's truly that energy, that working matter that's doing the work when we are in a state of meditation. How does it work? Where does it work? It works within our energy centers or our chakras. Seven wheels of energy beginning at the base of the spine, covering all different areas within us, ultimately the seventh energy center culminating at the crown of the head. Each one of these energy centers govern our physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects. So everything that has happened to us in our lives that is happening to us in our lives, that may happen to us in our lives, our habits, our conditionings, the way in which we were raised, the way in which we behave, our physical being, our mental being, emotional, spiritual being, all corresponds to different areas within us. And what is happening when we're meditating is that our kundalini is rising up, working within these seven energy centers to reestablish the positive innate qualities of each one of these chakras getting them into balance, ridding them of impurities which are getting in the way of our ultimate wellness. This inner energy is also working within our three energy channels. So we have three channels or nadis, the right, left, and center. The left energy channel begins the left side, base of the spine on the left side. It rises up the left side of our being, 
crosses over at the forehead and culminates on the right side of the head. The right side of the brain controls the left side of the body. And we'll talk more about these three energy channels, channels in subsequent classes. Our right channel rises up the right, crosses over at the forehead, and culminates on the left side of the head. The central channel is where this living process is truly taking place, rises right up the center and culminates at the seventh energy center, which is the fontanelle bone, the little fountain in medical science that was soft in our infancy. When that energy culminates at the crown of the head, the energy that exists within us is uniting with that energy which exists all around it. This is the yoga or union. Yoga simply means union. So awakening the energy, balancing our chakras, and balancing our energy channels. That's what, what is happening in our meditation process. All of this, I described it as ancient rediscovered knowledge. It is accessible to us because of the founder of this technique, Sri Mataji Nirmala Devi. In 1970, she began teaching this as a grassroots movement. Before that, in her earlier life, she was born in 1923, she was in very much involved in the Indian independence movement. She was a multiple time Nobel Peace Prize nominee. And her philosophy is reflected in the practice that you still see today in all of the teachers that continue to teach it as volunteers, as a grassroots, very organic, movement that this change comes from within. Anyone can experience it. This energy does not discriminate and you will not benefit more by paying for it. So it is always absolutely free. Since not from 1970 until today, this grassroots movement nonprofit has expanded. It is now present in more than 130 countries, some countries, you, there are huge stadiums that need to be rented in order to gather together the incredible numbers of people that will attend um, a class or a gathering. Um, in other countries, it's just starting and there's you know less of a population that practice it, but it's truly been amazing in my 26 years of practicing this to see the transformation that happens throughout the world, through regardless of language, culture, belief, history, how this can impact the individual and thereby impact the society as a whole. Why this is so important right now in this very unique time in our lives, a time that many of us have never experienced anything like this where we can feel isolated, we can feel all of the below, we can feel fear, insecurities, aggression, ego, intolerance, impatience, anxiety, loneliness, depression, all of those elements or imbalance which were already existing within us can become amplified when we have stressful situations like we do right now with this pandemic. And so what can we do? Why does meditation make a difference? to these elements because each one of them is an expression of our imbalanced subtle energy system. When this system gets strengthened, that fear transforms to courage, to security, to the knowledge and the recognition of our self. Our insecurities become full with that connection with the source of love within us. Within us. Our aggression, our reactions, our impatience, our intolerance are all manifestations of an imbalanced right channel, our ego as well, that over dominating power that can ex become excessive when that right channel gets out of balance. Anxiety as well, our loneliness, our depression, symptoms of our, a left channel becoming imbalanced, feeling sad, depressed, lonely. So all of them correlate with our system. When it's strengthened, these imbalances will subside. We're going to get into our meditation now using some of these very simple affirmations, gestures. We want to be very comfortable in our placement, when, how we're sitting. Our home position is palms open on our laps, fingertips apart. So that's our home position. We can always go back to wherever we're sitting is fine. There's no specific way in which you need to sit. You can sit on the ground, on a chair, on the sofa, cross-legged, not cross-legged, whatever works for you. 
the only guidance I would give would be not to sit too relaxed and not too upright so that you're uncomfortable, just nicely placed. As we do these simple affirmations and gestures, we're working towards cleansing our energy centers. And so we're using our right hand. Our right channel is the side of action. And so we're using that right hand to nourish our energy centers or our chakras. And those affirmations correlate to the qualities within each one of those energy centers. So on the left heart, that first image that you see there, we're focusing on the quality that we are ultimately not defined by our physical self. Our physical being, our mind, our ego, our insecurities, our conditionings, they evolve, they change, they don't define who we truly are. We can ultimately identify with that self, which is beyond our body, beyond our mind, beyond all physical aspects, that pure self or pure spirit. And so we'll simply be putting our attention on a few areas within us as we go through some of those gestures and affirmations. We'll take our right, the second to last, that you see in the center of the screen now, is taking our right hand, placing it across the forehead, bending our head into the palm of the right hand. Here is where we're putting our attention on the quality of forgiveness. So all of these affirmations, they're not lip service, they're not exercises, movements of our hand and our body. What they intend to be are ways to direct our attention to the problems within us, the imbalances within us, the blockages within us that actually stop the raising of our inner energy. So in order to help clear the way for her to rise, we are simply letting go of that which gets in the way. So when we forgive, we are letting go of anger, resentment, spite, that helps to open up the sixth energy center when we simply forgive. The last, we'll be taking our palm of our right hand, taking the center of the palm, we can stretch our fingers and apply a gentle pressure to the crown of the head. This seventh energy center, as I mentioned, is where the culmination takes place, where our inner energy rises up and culminates at the crown of the head, that happening is known as self-realization. So as we give that area a gentle massage, we are putting our focus on that point and feeling the desire bubble up from within, that this happening take place, whether we believe it or not, because it's not about believing it for the sake of believing or having blind faith. It's about enabling this practice to happen and approaching it like a scientist approaching it as a hypothesis, if this is something that can truly make an impact in my life, then I want to experience it, I want to benefit from it. So I want to experience my self-realization. We've also got some balancing techniques that we may have time for today. If not, we'll be getting to these later on in subsequent weeks, balancing the left side, we keep our left palm open, drop our right hand towards the ground. This is to help balance our left energy channel. Most likely we'll get to this next week, but we'll, we may get to it this week. In our right channel, right palm open, left arm bent at the elbow so that the left hand is near the left ear. I'll be guiding us through. There's no need to memorize any of this. The intention of what we're doing is to focus on clearing our energy centers, putting ourselves into balance, and it won't work unless we're in the state of meditation. So we can do anything we want with our hands, with our mind, saying affirmations, but they will be more potentially, they will be more effective once we are in that state of thoughtless awareness or meditation. So we'll get on into our meditation now. If you have a device or anything near you that might make some noise, this would be a good time to turn off the sound. Again, our home position is palms open on our laps, fingertips apart, so that's how we're going to be sitting. You're also welcome to take your glasses off. You don't need to look. Looking may actually distract you from what's going on.
So as we get comfortable in our home position, palms open on our laps, eyes closed. We're going to start by focusing within ourselves. We can take a few deep breaths, inhaling through our nose, exhaling through the mouth, rolling our shoulders a few times, rolling our head on our neck, really relaxing, releasing any tension that we might be carrying in the upper part of our body. And then placing aside all thoughts which correspond to the past or the future. No thoughts matter right now. There's nothing at all that we need to attend to. We are here carving out time for ourselves to deepen in our meditation practice there's nothing we need to be attentive to. We don't have to keep our antenna on for sound or activity around us. We can turn our complete focus within ourselves. When we meditate in Sahaja, we are looking for this present moment. It's a bit of a mystery, a bit of a challenge to find something that we never knew existed. One technique to do so is, as each thought comes, entering our mind, trying to distract us, waving its hands in front of us, how incredibly relevant that thought, that idea, that observation happens to be. We silently say within ourselves, no thought matters right now. Disabling the power of that mental activity over us and strengthening our own ability to stand above it all to disregard all of that mental noise and to start to seek out the silence that exists between our thoughts. So as we simply begin to disregard our thoughts, we'll find that each thought has a beginning and an end as we have chosen not to pay attention to them, we may be able to begin to see that after each thought and before the next, there is a lull, there is a pause, there is a silence. That silence is this present moment. That is the reality that we want to engage with in order to be in the state of meditation. That is where our attention must be directed. And so it's a bit like riding a bike, finding the way to create that balance, to disregard what is not relevant, not important, and find that second nature ability to be completely present, completely aware, completely engaged with the balance of being right here, right now, in this present moment. If we can physically 
we will find that state more present. We'll find more of that silence when we direct our attention above the top of the head. So we can slowly raise our hand up from the base of the spine to the top of the head, slowly cupping our hand in front of us, raising it up, following the path of our inner energy as she emerges from her dormant state, rises up the center channel, the central energy channel, and culminates at the crown of the head. Once our hand reaches the crown of the head, and we can repeat this a few times, we'll gently place the center of the palm on the fontanelle bone area, the crown of the head, and give that area a gentle massage, gently pressing and rotating at the crown of the head. I want to experience my self-realization. Beckoning our, that feminine power within us, that inner energy, kundalini, from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. I want to experience my self-realization, or I want to deepen my experience of self-realization. And then slowly let's raise our hand up a few inches above the top of the head and observe what we might feel close to or farther above the top of the head. Keeping our awareness in that silent lull between our thoughts and paying attention to the manifestation of this happening, what we can feel close to or farther above the top of the head. We'll keep our focus there as we slowly bring our hand back down to our lap, keeping our focus over the crown of the head. Returning our hands to our laps, palms open. Let's nourish some of our energy centers. We'll begin at the heart. Taking our right hand and placing it on the left side of the chest. This is the left side of the fourth energy center, the left heart. Right hand on the left side of the chest. At this level, we are connecting with our pure self, that formless identity, which has been with us from our very earliest days and is still with us today. Our pure spirit. Connecting with that self, that me, that we know when the lights are off, when there's no mirror, when time and space dissipate, and we know simply ourselves. We can silently say from our hearts, I am not this body, I am not this mind. These things do not define me. I am nothing superficial. I am the pure spirit. Reestablishing that bond which exists between our attention and our spirit. Feeling that connection to our pure selves. the joy of that connection to ourselves that is beyond our mind, beyond all responsibilities, beyond all mental ideas, beyond expectations, beyond time. I am the pure spirit.
We'll then take our right hand and place it on the left side of the neck, turning our head to the right. Our right hand is on the left side of the neck. And as we turn our head to the right, we're opening up that area on the left side of our neck. This is the fifth energy center, the left side, where we pocket our guilt, where we beat ourselves up and we tuck it nicely away, that habit of regretting and blaming ourselves for what might happen, or what has already happened. So rather than making excuses, apologizing for what we didn't do wrong, let's say from our hearts with complete authority within ourselves, complete dignity within ourselves, I am not guilty. I am not guilty for anything at all. that power within that statement of reclaiming our dignity, our recognition of self-worth, our ability to process without feeling guilty is completely transformative. It opens up this fifth energy center on the left side and it rids our system of all of that past guilt and regret that we've been harboring for so many years. I am not guilty. We'll then take our right hand, place it across the forehead, rest our head into the palm of the right hand, bending our head slightly forward. This affirmation helps to clear our sixth energy center at the forehead. We often find ourselves trapped in our mental race, thinking, thinking, predicting, reacting, planning, regretting, processing. We want to pierce through it all. And the way to get beyond our mind so that we can access the state of silence of the present moment is through forgiveness. So without thinking of anyone in specific, but in general, recognizing that any anger, resentment, the desire to seek revenge, all spite, all judgments on others, they won't fix a thing. They won't change the past, and they probably won't change the future. What they will do is keep this sixth energy center constricted, keeping, maintaining that anger and that resentment, that frustration, those judgments, that blame. So recognizing that it wouldn't hurt to let it go. And even one step further, recognizing that we want to let it go, that we are capable of letting it go that it will benefit us to let it go. We'll say from our hearts, with full conviction, I forgive everyone and I forgive myself. I completely forgive everyone. And I forgive myself. Doing these very simple gestures and affirmations while in the state of meditation. If it is possible for us to be beyond our mental activity, we'll find an immediate change. We'll find it immediately 
easier to access that state of thoughtless awareness. Let's bring our hand back to our lap, palms open, and see if we can at this point bring our focus very easily, very lightly up from the forehead, from the mind, from all that activity, from all that noise, piercing through the distractions of the future and the past to emerge out from the seventh energy center, emerging outwards into that state of thoughtless awareness, completely inseparable from the present moment. The challenge we face is to deny the temptations of all mental activity. Has any thoughts come our way? Trying to pull our attention out of our state of meditation. We simply deny that temptation. No thought is important right now. And then resume establishing our complete attention up and above the crown of the head. Exploring the dynamic reality of this present moment. The dynamic happening of the raising of our inner energy, the reflection of that happening that may be felt at this point on the palms of the hands, that may be felt above the top of the head. It might help to raise our hand up again from the base of the spine to the top of the head. We can do that a few times if we find our attention is drifting. We need to reestablish our target, our goal, our destination is on and even farther above, if we can, the crown of the head. One or two inches above the crown of the head. And we can always go back, giving that area a gentle massage, gently pressing and rotating on that Sahasrara Chakra, the seventh energy center, or the fontanel bone area at the crown of the head. I want to experience my self-realization. I want to deepen my experience of self-realization. keeping our attention at that point between our hand and our head. Not focusing on our hand, not focusing on our head, but focusing on the point between. And then as our hand rises up, that space expands. Our attention expands into the space, which exists above the top of the head. Let's keep our focus in that space as we return our hand back to our lap. We'll maintain our meditation for a few minutes with some music.
Let's check on ourselves at this point in our meditation. At any point, we can ask ourselves, where is my attention? Have I become engaged in thought? Or am I able to continually bring myself back into that meditative state that state of thoughtless awareness above the top of the head. Let's bring our hand up again from the base of the spine to the top of the head and see what we can feel at this point in our meditation. What observations might we be feeling close to or farther above the crown of the head? Maintaining our meditative state as we observe. Not approaching this from our mind, but while in thoughtless awareness, while we suspend our thoughts, what can we feel close to or farther above the top of the head? not analyzing the experience, not expecting or forcing anything. We can switch hands, just observing, switching our hands, bringing our left hand up to the top of the head, observing what we might feel close to or farther above the top of the head. And if we are able to observe something slightly above, see how far from that Point at the crown of the head as we raise our hand up on that vertical axis. 
legs. How far above the top of the head are we still able to observe some type of sensations? That's where we want to keep our focus at that highest point. We'll bring our, our hands back down to our laps as our focus is maintained over the top of the head. And now we'll check on what we might be feeling in the palms of the hands. So we can bring our hands up off of our laps at the level of the heart, opening our palms in front of us, fingertips apart, hands open in front of us, paying attention to any subtle reflection of happening, any sensations that we might be feeling on the palms of the hands or on the fingertips, on one hand, on the other, or both, just observing. No thought. Not too much skepticism because skepticism is also thought. We're not trusting that it exists, but while we are in the state of non-thinking, while we are in the state of meditation, what do we feel? We can slowly bring our hands back down to our laps, bringing our meditation to an end and opening our eyes. As I finish up, and then I'll turn off the recording once we're finished, what I'd like to make sure you are left with today are some guidelines how to keep this practice up. What we did in class today, it's always unique. Every single meditation is going to be unique. We're following our intu intuition. It's not a rote practice in which you have to do a certain thing, and then after that, something else. It's about following your intuition to get your attention into the state of thoughtless awareness twice a day for 10, 15 minutes in the morning before we're very active and in the evening before we're absolutely exhausted doing any of the techniques that we did in class that might have helped. Simply sitting with our palms open and trying to navigate our attention in between the activity, ultimately to rest into that space above the top of the head. It takes practice. And so in the beginning, just carving out time to find that state. On a weekly basis, on a regular basis, joining in collective meditations will only help you more, whether you're joining us here on Zoom or on Sahaja Online, which is a wonderful site as well that I and some other instructors teach on. It's an incredible library of knowledge about this technique. And there are online guided live meditations just about, I think at this point, every day of the week. Always free. If you are joining us this summer, I'm not going to bombard inboxes, so I'd like to know who is joining us. The best way for me to know that is for you to shoot me an email. I've also put a button on our website, meditateupstate.com. You can click on that mailing list sign up and sign up for our current class attendee. So I know who's active. I've got a huge mailing list and I really would love to know who would like to continue to get mailings this summer, um, who's going to be attending the classes and so forth. You can also just send me an email, call or text me as well to give me that information. So with that, and of course, joining us on Wednesdays here at 7 p.m. for this series, which ends at the end of August. So with that, we'll have some questions. I will stop the recording.